We have a primetime exclusive with the one and only LeBron James, one of this generation's greatest star athletes, three-time NBA champion, four-time league MVP. But LeBron James started out as a kid from Akron, a kid who missed 83 days of school in the fourth grade, but a kid with big dreams. Now he's a man on a mission, helping kids just like him, opening the I Promise School in his hometown. LeBron, the superstar, who's had so many great moments on the court, says opening this school may be the greatest moment of his life. For us to be in a position where we can bring like this into fruition and, and then see stories of kids that's going through the same thing that I went through, it even makes it even more of like, yes, we did this. This is why we should have did it. But there is a lot that has got LeBron James fired up off the court. Listen to what he says about living while black in America. No matter how big you can become, no matter how successful you are, no matter what you do in the community, no matter what you do in your profession, you know, being an African American in America is always tough. And they always gonna let you know that you are the N-word, no matter who you are. So is there a run for office in his future? If someone tried to recruit a LeBron to run for president, they said, listen, they've got no one. If you don't run, Trump's gonna win. Would you run? Well, in that case, I may. <laughs> this is the interview that you don't want to miss. LeBron James, one-on-one. -on -one. Thank you for doing this. Uh, thanks for having me. Everyone who, says I'm, who knows I'm doing this says, much respect, much respect <laughs> for I Promise. But you have so much going on. Why do you want to do this? Um, I mean, the kids talk to me, you know, either verbally or I could just hear their mental. Um, I, I, I am one of them, um, not too far removed, so... Uh, it wasn't even a question. It was. It, it happened organically. You just did it. You figured that this was the best thing for you to do. Are you Are you nervous about this? Because I, I remember when Oprah was opening her school, she was like, "It's such a big responsibility. I don't think I've ever been as nervous about anything or felt this much yeah, level yeah. of responsibility." No, it's not that I'm nervous. I, I'm more excited about it. I, I'm I'm truly excited and, and truly like humbled and blessed that, first of all, that the Akron Public School System, my hometown, even you know did this joint venture with us that allowed us to even make something like this possible. And then, you know, my, just my support system and, and my foundation. You know, Michelle Campbell, first of all, the number one point uh, person in my foundation. They, they brought this whole thing together and, and brought it to me. And I was like, absolutely. Let's, let's not. Let's not. Oh, absolutely. You can't yeah. get nowhere in, nowhere in life without help. Without, without help. Well, you, you were, I think it was a third grader who interviewed you for um, Teen Vogue, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And asked you about all the challenges and about the single mom, yeah, right? Yeah. And I, I relate to that because I grew up with a single mom who's my hero. Your mom is your hero. Yeah. Um, is that one of the reasons this is important to you? Oh, absolutely. And it's, uh, it's one of the huge reasons that it's important, um, you know, just because of you know, the everyday struggle that me and my mom had to go through at that age, you know, being in the third and fourth grade and uh, for us to be in a position where we can bring like this into fruition and, and then see stories of kids that's going through the same thing that I went through, it even makes it even more of like, yes, we did this. This is why we should have did it. But how do you conquer those fears? Because Jaden was um, his name. Mm -hmm. Talked about um, hearing gunshots, yeah, gunshots and that sort of thing, yeah. walking through, being tempted by mm -hmm. drugs and all those things. How do you think they... How do you get them to understand that that's not the path that they have to take? Um, I think being in, in a support system, and that's what this is all about. You know, I think for me, when I did go to school or when I was playing little league sports, you know, being around kids and being around people that have fun and, 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 and kind of speak the same language as you, um, it allows you to kind of escape away from the drugs and the violence and the gunshots and things that go on, you know, on an everyday basis. And, and uh, you know, and that's what we're here for right now. That's why I'm opening this school to be able to get these kids' mind away from and their body away from. We even, we even, you know, made the hours of being in school longer from eight to instead of three to five. Yeah, we said that's a yeah, long time. Yeah, yeah, we want them here, you know, and, um, you know, so we can let them know not only do we want you here, but we, we really do care. We really do care about what, what happens with you. Well, you and people say, he's an athlete, right? Well, athletics are big, but this is, this is a STEM school. It's science. Mathematics yeah. and, and reading oh, and yeah. Yeah. all of that math reading social studies all the way down to, to gym class to music arts all everything. It's holistic. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's important. Are, are, are athletics important to th these kids. Do you think it's their minds right now. No, I think both. I think um, I think athletics are important, but also their mind. I think both. I think it just plays. Um, it is bring when you're when you're a part of sports and you're a part of your mind. It just brings some so much camaraderie and so much fun, 
you know, we, we are in a position right now in America, more importantly, where this whole, this race thing is, is, is taking over, you know, and, and um, because, one, because I believe our president is kind of trying to divide us. Um, but I think... Kind of? Yeah, <laughs> is, is, not, I don't want to say kind of. He's, he's dividing us, and, and what I noticed over the last few months, um, that he's kind of used sport to kind of divide us, and, I, and that's something that I can't relate to because I know that sport was the first time I ever was around someone white, you know, and I, and, I, and I got an opportunity to see them and learn about them, and they got an opportunity to learn about me, and we became very good friends, and I was like, oh, wow, this is all because of sports, and sports has never been something that divides people. It's always been something that brings someone together. Do you remember the, the, any of your first experiences around someone who was different than you, someone who was white, you said, because that was through sports? Yeah. Do you remember what it was, and what was your reaction? Um, it was different. I mean, they, they first of all, from a... You know, they ate dinner at a different hour than I've ever ate dinner before. Um, mean, like earlier? Yeah, like supper at like 6.30 in the afternoon. Right. I thought it was the afternoon. They call it the evening right. time. Um, it was the first time I ever seen a pantry. Um, you understand? Like for me, yeah. everything, when I grew up, everything was on top of the refrigerator. Right. You know, so <laughs> when I went to my white friend's house, they had a pantry. So, you know, I learned about that as well. So, um, but they just, they, they kind of live life without no care, no worry, you know, and I wanted to get to a point, you know, maybe I could live life without no care, no worry either, you know, being around a lot of my, you know, white friends growing up, and it was just a pretty cool thing, though. Yeah, and even, like, bedtime. Bedtime was, like, 7.30, 8 o'clock. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, it wasn't none of that. None, none of that for me on this side, <laughs> none of that. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because I've, I've been watching you, especially over the, I've been watching you for a long time. Yeah. This is not the first time I've interviewed you. I remember interviewing you for your website and some other yeah, things that you, you. that you did. But um, you, there's been something has changed in you over the last year or two. Is it what's going on in the country racially? Is it is it politically? Is political? Um, I think it's a little bit of everything. Um, you know, I think um, it, it starts with the Trayvon Martin, you know, situation. You know, and um, and the reason it starts with that, I believe, is because you know, having kids of my own, having boys of my own, mm -hmm. it hit home for me to see and to learn the story and to think that. You know, if my boy left home and, and he never returned. Right. You know, that, that kind of that hit a switch. Right. That kind of hit a switch for me. And, yeah. um, and from that point on, I, I knew that my voice and my platform had to be used for more than just sports. Right. Good for you. Good for you, man. Yeah. Um, you, you said that, you know, your, your, boy, your boy never returned home. But then there are people, kids are returning home. And you think about the kids are being taken away. Right. Yeah. The same thing that, that your heart like breaks when yeah, you think absolutely. someone comes over, they want a better life, and all of a sudden their kids are being taken away from them. Can yeah. you imagine that feeling? No, I can't imagine that. And, and you know, we've always grown up saying this is the land of the free and the opportunity here in America. <laughs> and um, to be a parent, uh, to be a father, to be a husband, and to think that you can have a beautiful family one day and then the next day they could be taken away um, is something that um, you never ever could imagine. You were talking about. Um, about at athletics, right, mm -hmm. and how you think that this president is dividing. Yeah. And I think about the kids now. Like, the, there are kids who are selling water. Um, I interviewed a little kid who wanted some action figures, and he was out doing stuff with his mom, and he got, like, the cops called on him. Like, how do you have to tell these kids, even with that, yeah. you know, when you're just living right. while black, how do you get them to keep going? I think... Um you know the yeah, incidents yeah, I'm talking yeah, about, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think the best way to tell them to keep going is that no matter, no matter how successful you could become, no matter who you are, when you're an African American kid, uh, man or female, you're always going to be going against obstacles. And it's either one or two things that you can do: you can allow it to affect you and for you to degrade, or you can allow it to uh, empower you even more. And, and to rise above it. And I think if we look at some of the greatest leaders of our time, mm -hmm. you look at, you know, Muhammad Ali, you look at Dr. Martin Luther King, and all the adversity they went through, they never let them, they never, they never let it down them. They yeah. always used it to say, okay, this is even more motivation. This is even more a way for me to even be more powerful. Yeah. And, um, and, and they're the reason why we are here today. Your challenges become goals um, and your haters become your motivator. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So um, you were saying, you were talking about the uh, ath using athle athletics to divide yeah, people. Yeah, You've heard what the man in charge, mm -hmm. I'm not going to call him that, you've heard what the president has mm -hmm. said about um, Marshawn, mm -hmm. about Steph, yep. about 
you know, it seems like it's Kaepernick, Kaepernick, yeah, yeah. men of color who have means yeah. and a platform. Yeah. What's up with that? Um, what's up with that is all wrong and it's not up, it's down. And, um, you know, for him to, um, like I said, use sports to kind of divide us is something I can't, I can't sit back and not and not say nothing. Um, Why you you tweeted about a couple yeah, of days? You tweeted about Charlottesville. <laughs> you, you did. You tweeted about when Steph Curry when yeah. he you know he called him. You called him a bum. Yeah. Because he but Steph had already said I'm not going to the White yeah, House. Yeah, he already said he wasn't going, and he tried to use it after that to say, well, you're not invited. Well, you can't uninvite me to something I've already said I'm not going to go to. And we we all know Steph Curry, model citizen, great kid, come from a great background, great family. Great father. Um, great father and so many <clears throat> different kids. So many kids, white, black, Hispanic, all different race, love what he's doing, and rightfully so. Um, there's no reason for anyone to ever attack him, you know, yeah. and um, that's uh, I, I felt that. Do you, whenever there's something like he's in trouble, he can't wiggle his way out of something, he'll bring up the national anthem thing and kneeling or yeah. standing. Do you think he uses black athletes as a scapegoat? Um, at times. At times. Um, and more often than, than, than not, um, I believe he uses anything that's popular to try to negate people from thinking about the positive things that they could actually be doing and try to just to get our minds um, to not be as sharp as possible right then. Just to, you know, either from kneeling, from football players kneeling, you look at Kaepernick, um, who was, a, you know, protesting something that he believed in, and he did it in the most calm fashion way possible. Very respectful. Had it, he did all his due diligence, he was knowledgeable about it, and everyone knew why he did it. Um, you look at all the NFL players that still kneeling and things of that nature. You look at Steph. You look at you know Marshawn Lynch. You look at all these instances why he's trying to divide our sport. But at the end of the day, sport is the reason why we all come together. Yeah. What do you? Um, I just wonder where we go from here because Charlotte. To a lot of people, Charlottesville was just like it. I mean, you yeah. tweeted. I think you said, "Is this what our country is? Make uh, America great again?" He said that. You know, I'm paraphrasing your tweet, but I think that was just sort of for everybody, like, all right, that's enough. I, yeah. I can't believe this. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we all felt that. I don't think you, you, you didn't, it didn't matter what color you are to feel that, um, to feel that tension, to feel like, you know, our, our, our great country, you know, that we all wake up every day in the land of the free as we believe with great opportunity to be even more than what people even expect you to become. Um, for that to happen, you just felt like that was uh, that was kind of his tipping point. Were you, um, I guess, maybe you were surprised, maybe you weren't. The whole N-word incident at your house when you had the N-word painted? Um, I don't know if I was surprised. Um, were you I hurt? don't know if I was hurt. I don't know if I was disappointed. It was so many different emotions. Um, more importantly, it was the conversation that I had to have with my boys that, um, that it was, that hurt me. Um, but at the same time, it also enlightened me and also knew that no matter, as I stated, you know, sitting, you know, when I did an interview after that, um, that no matter how big you can become, no matter how successful you are, no matter what you do in the community, no matter what you do in your profession, you know, being an African-American in America is always tough. And they always going to let you know that you are the N-word, no matter who you are. And that was just a, a reset. Even when you have LeBron status and LeBron money, <laughs> that... It doesn't. You think it's harder to be, um, when you see these incidents of just about yeah. people living, just being black, yeah. and what happened to you, your house, all that, do you think it's harder now, or do you think it's, it's always been there, we're just seeing it because of cell phones and... No, I think it's always been there. Um, but I think um, the president in charge now has given people, um, they don't care now, they throw it in your face now. Yeah. Do you, would you ever run for office? Run for office? Would you ever run? <laughs> would you ever be a politician or run for office? I don't think so. I don't think so. I sit here and say I don't think. So. I, I don't know. I'm being serious. If someone <laughs> tried to recruit a LeBron to run for president, they said, "Listen, they've got no one. If you don't run, Trump's going to win." Would you run? Well, in that case, I may. Yeah. If they have no one, yeah. I believe. I mean, I believe there's some people out there. I hope. But if there's well, no see, one, let's see first. Let's see first. <laughs> but you would run. Let's see first. I, I, the last question is, what do you hope happens from this school? Because I got to tell you, I walked through. Mm -hmm. I am impressed. Everybody's impressed. This is a great thing you're doing. Yeah. What do you want to happen? What do you want this to go from here? Um, what I want to happen, you know, every kid that walked through those doors, every kid, you know, from the 240 kids that we're starting with right now, third and fourth grade, to the, 
you know, to 2022 where we're going to have first through eighth grade. Yeah. Um, we want every kid to walk through this school to be inspired, yeah. um, to come come away with something, yeah. something where they can give back. And, and it doesn't matter. It could be anything. But just for, for kids in general, all they want to know is that someone care. Yeah. And when they walk through that door, I hope they, they know that someone care. And you're gonna you're going to LA, but is your heart here? Uh, my heart is always here. This is this Akron, Ohio. Is, that's why I'm doing this school right here today. Yeah, you excited about LA? Absolutely. Yeah. One more question: What would you say to the president if he's sitting right here? Uh, I would never sit across from him. You would never. You didn't want no. to talk to him? No. I sit that across from Barack, though. I love sitting down with LeBron today. And you know what I really love about it is that he. Is, is his authenticity. And I was sitting down with a celebrity who didn't care about, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna um, uh, offend this demographic or somebody might buy my record, might not buy my record because of this or someone may not come to a game because of that. LeBron is who he is, he says it like he means it. I am so glad that he's around to do that and more people should continue to do that in this environment. So thank you very much, LeBron James. That's good things. Mr. President, tweet about that professional athlete doing a really good thing for his community. That would be nice to talk about.